since the Syrian crisis broke out in April 2011, Turkey has been one of the main uh, countries that has received a large influx of Syrian refugees. We were recently in Gaziantep and Kilis provinces right on the Syrian border. Uh, each have more than 100,000 refugees, uh, possibly even more than that. Most of them, the majority of them that we encountered in Gaziantep and Kilis, were living in very poor conditions, about 20 refugees in one house. Some of them we saw in Kilis province that had just arrived from Syria were staying out in the open in makeshift tents with plastic sheeting over some bushes, sleeping on blankets. It was very clear in my conversations with them that if they had the option to live in a camp, that, that they would. So these people who are staying outside in makeshift tents, basically under plastic sheeting, they're all new arrivals after the barrel bombings in Aleppo. Um, one uh, Syrian told us that there are about 400 people who stay in the bus terminal behind me in the evenings. There are some Syrian aid NGOs that are trying to help them, give them food and, and take them in, but it's just not enough. A barrel bomb is basically a improvised explosive device, explosives packed into a big metal barrel that is then dropped from a helicopter that's use can only be indiscriminate. And the regime has employed them as a terrorizing tactic, uh, often to depopulate areas uh, that have been completely under rebel control. Almost all of the Syrian refugees that I've talked to said more of their relatives, more of their acquaintances from their villages or their towns had arrived in Turkey. And they had even less hope of going back since there was a regime offensive and also an ISIS threat. During the Iraq war, the group currently known as ISIS became infamous for its indiscriminate suicide bombings, for its beheadings, for its assassinations of political opponents across the spectrum, including those within the Sunni insurgency in Iraq. They have employed very much the same approach in Syria. We now see videos of them beheading Alawites. We have seen a series of suicide attacks targeting rebel groups with which they have conflict. We have seen executions of community members for unverifiable perceived offenses against uh, their ultra-conservative Salafi values. The radical group in Syria, the Islamic State of Iraq and al-Sham, uh, had approached very close to the Turkish border. So right now what's behind us, at the foot of this hill is a village controlled by ISIS. Basically what you have here is the main border crossing, Beba Salama, and all the roads leading from it in the direction of Aleppo uh, are controlled by ISIS. So I was doing field work along the border in early November. I went to crossings between Syria and Turkey where you're able to speak with fighters who are leaving the country, in some cases directly from battle. Um, and speaking to them, hearing in their own words the extent to which ISIS had become an enemy to them on par with the regime, and in many of their views in, uh, in collaboration with the regime, helped us to understand as an organization the quickness and ferocity with which rebels would later turn on ISIS uh, in the months that followed. Of course, another thing that you notice when you go down to the border is how porous it is and how easy it is to, to pass through despite an increased military presence and despite increased controls at the official checkpoints. Turkey has given one of the most generous responses, humanitarian responses, to the Syrian crisis. It's hosting upwards of 700,000 refugees. Uh, this is the official number. The unofficial number could be reaching up to mi a million. Most of them are going to stay here, even if the conflict is resolved tomorrow. There will be a need to integrate the ones that want to be integrated into Turkey and to provide some sort of a, a social care mechanism for these people. Turkey feels left alone by the international community in dealing with the Syrian humanitarian crisis. Turkey should not have to pay for taking care of these people alone. It accepted them on behalf of the international community. But it, I think, needs to open up a little bit more to the international community that wants to help it.